Hello everyone, my name is uh, Greg Fisher. I'm a professor in robotics engineering at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. I also wear a number of other hats, including being director of Practice Point. It's a medical robotics uh, R&D center at WPI, and also a, a co-founder and science advisor for a medical robotics. And it's my pleasure to uh, speak with you today about our work on delivering needle-based therapeutic ultrasound inside the MRI scanner under live MRI guidance using a robotic system to assist in delivery. Uh, just in terms of the uh, disclosures, I just wanted to let you know that I do have an affiliation with uh, Amedical Robotics that is uh, commercializing some of the work that I'm going to be talking to you today that was developed in the lab. Uh, and then I'm also um, wanted to point out that a lot of this work is done by many of the students that are in my lab, and in particular, a lot of this uh, ablation modeling and control work that was done by uh, Dr. Katie Gandomi that was a recent uh, PhD student in my research group. So before I dig too deep, I just wanted to point out that uh, we have our hands in a number of different research areas uh, in the AIM lab at WPI. This includes everything from MRI-guided surgical interventions to adding intelligence to more traditional, uh, minimally invasive robotic surgery procedures, uh, socially assistive robots, um, wearable and uh, rehab type systems, uh, as well as things related to biofabrication and uh, process automation. But in terms of uh, MRI-guided robotics, this is really the uh, core uh, focus of what I want to talk to you today and also most of the funded work that happens in my research group. Uh, our goal really is to leverage high-quality intraoperative MRI and figure out how we can use this to guide surgical interventions. Um, the approach that we're taking is to make MRI-compatible robots, that is robotic systems that can go inside the bore of an MRI scanner and can actually manipulate an instrument during live guidance. And that also allows not only uh, anatomical imaging, but we can also get uh, functional imaging, thermal imaging, and other uh, parameters during a procedure. And the applications that we're focusing on are one, prostate intervention. So we're working with our collaborators at the Brigham Women's Hospital on trying to do image-guided uh, prostate biopsy. And then uh, what I really wanted to talk to you about today was how we can do conformal ablation of brain tumors, again, using the robotic system to, to deliver needle-based therapeutic ultrasound while we have real-time MRI-based thermal feedback. So to show that you know this is not just uh, you know lab-based uh, research here, we actually have taken the uh, prostate version of our robot. We performed clinical trials in about 30 patients over at the uh, Brigham Women's Hospital. And again, the idea here was we wanted to take live intraoperative MRI, um, fuse that with preoperative MR that was used to do surgical planning, and do very targeted uh, biopsy samples. Now, what I want to uh, dig into deeper here is. Uh, taking this uh, robotic approach and applying it to a neurosurgery. So what we're doing is taking our MRI compatible robot, putting it inside the bore with the patient, and then using this to guide our neurosurgical interventions. And this includes developing an MRI compatible robot. It takes includes developing the control systems. It includes developing all of the software, um, including the modeling and the control aspects. And this was done primarily under uh, NIH funding with a number of uh, collaborators. So I wanted to show you a video here, which is going to dig a little bit deeper into these. Uh, pro um.
And so these model-based controllers that I talked about, that's really what we're going to be driving towards right now is what are the steps that are required to do so. So first off, before we go there, just to dig a little bit deeper, this is the uh, probe that we're using for this work. It's a needle-based therapeutic uh, ultrasound probe. It has a little ultrasonic element and a uh, fluid flow through it. Uh, these elements can be created with one, two, or three elements. They can be essentially 360 probes, or they can be uh, sectored. Uh, and some other work, we've also put in uh, MRI-based uh, tracking coils that we can use to localize these uh, probes within the scanner. So then if we're going to do this, we need to run through this modeling process because we really need to understand what does the temperature propagation look like for these probes. And that's the first step before we can actually start doing control. So in this case, we used a COMSOL to model these probes. And this is what it looks like for a cross section of one of these 90 degree elements. And once you have that, now we need to figure out what's the resonant frequency. That's the frequency that we're going to operate the electronics at to drive those uh, ultrasonic elements. Once you've done that, we can't jump right into doing the thermal modeling. The first thing we have to do is look at the acoustic pressure field modeling. So again, in COMSOL, what we've done is taken this ultrasonic element, uh, tried to identify what the acoustic pressure field is going to look like. And then once we have this acoustic pressure field, then we can finally get into what we really want to use for um, this work, which is understanding what the bioheat transfer model looks like. So as we run this probe, we want to see what's actually going to happen to the temperature of the tissue as it's moving through the tissue. What's cool is once we have this model, not only are we restricted to whatever probe we have available, but we can actually model this to different types of probes. So what we're showing here is the 90 degree, which I'd shown on the earlier slides. Uh, there can also be narrower sectors. There can be uh, wider sectors. There can be flat probes, which can give another ablation shape. And we can also model various different shapes that we haven't even built yet to try to identify what is the probe shape or configuration that you want, because the different geometries are going to give us a different ability to do ablation profiles. And as you'll see later when I show you some of the uh, shapes that we're able, able to ablate, um, you can adjust these and we can use different probes to get different uh, profiles. So now what we want to do is say, does this model that we created in COMSOL, it looks great, but does it actually match what really happens? So since we're doing this as an MRI guided procedure, we're using MR thermometry, so MRTI to actually identify in real time what the temperature looks like. And then here we're going to compare the MRTI to the simulation results. And if these match, that means we're able to use this in our control algorithms moving forward. And what you see here is at several different time cross sections, we can say, yep, it looks like what we actually put in this model is very close to what actually happened in reality. And then if we want to dig a little bit deeper here, we can actually take a slice through one of those and then we can have much better temporal resolution and we can compare. And what we see is we get a very, very good um, uh, relationship between what we modeled and what actually happened in the real imaging. Uh, noting that, you know, MRTI in some cases here had a little bit of noise, but you can see that we have a really, really good agreement between the two of them. So now that we have this, um, we want to say, how can we actually use this to control the ablation shape, right? So what I just showed you means I can put a probe in, I can power it up, I can see what the temperature field around that probe is going to look like. But what we really want to do is determine some sort of arbitrary shape that I want to be ablated that's going to reach a particular thermal dose. And in order to do that, we want to leverage the robot. That's really the whole goal of this. So we're going to take this probe, we're going to put it into the, into the tissue, and then we're going to rotate it. And by adjusting the um, contour as we're rotating or adjusting the speed as we're rotating it, we can actually create an arbitrary ablation shape that's going to get the appropriate uh, profile that we want. So for this, we're using the K-Wave modeling to do the dynamic modeling within MATLAB. And then we can feed it various trajectories. So this was just an example of what happens if we take that probe and on the left side, we don't rotate it. So essentially, we just keep it at theta equals 0. Um, the one in the middle is we rotate it at constant speed. And then the one on the right is we have this squared relationship with speed. This was just to demonstrate that if you take this probe and you rotate it with different profiles, and it doesn't have to be these three. In fact, we're going to talk later about how we can identify what shape we actually want to get. We can then figure out what the temperature dose looked like. And once we have that, we can actually use the SEM43 thresholds and identify which sections would actually receive a sufficient uh, thermal heat for a necrosis to actually uh, destroy the tumor. So in this case, you can see we got three different shapes and we were able to draw a very straightforward threshold of what the actual um, boundary looks like of the uh, lesion that we created. And this was very promising because now it means that we can actually go ahead and try to create arbitrary shaped lesions. 
So we take the robot, we put it in the scanner. This is a picture of the neurosurgery robot that we just showed in that video. It's inside the uh, scanner here. It has the uh, needle-based therapeutic uh, ultrasound applicator or probe attached to it. We take this along with our phantom. We put the phantom and the robot inside the bore of the MRI scanner. Again, the robot is capable of moving and actuating the probe while it's inside the scanner. And also the probe itself is compatible with the uh, MR environment. So we can perform this procedure under live MR guidance. And if we take a look at it here, this is what it looks like if we take that probe and we rotate it using the robotic um, end effector at a constant speed. Again, we don't need to do constant speed. Uh, we can do arbitrary uh, trajectories, but the goal here is to show that Hey, we can actually simulate what that looks like and we can actually have good agreement between what we get experimentally plus the fact that we can experimentally get this data we can actually use that later in a closed loop control to guarantee you actually have an ablation of the shape that you wanted so that was a video to show one example here we show four different uh, motion profiles and we show what it looks like at uh, several different time points and you can see that we get uh, again very very good agreement between the thermal imaging in the simulation. The whole point of this is to say, if we have a good simulation, now we can actually use this in a model-based controller moving forward and actually ablate arbitrary shapes. But if we want to ablate arbitrary shapes, what does that mean? We need to actually figure out what is the shape that we want. That would usually happen through segmentation. And once we've segmented that shape, then we actually need to figure out what is the ablation trajectory that you want to follow on to burn that arbitrary shape. So we're not rotating at constant speed anymore. We're actually going to rotate this at a very, very specific profile to identify um, what we want to do to uh, burn this tissue. And we've actually used a, a reinforcement uh, learning based approach to uh, determine what these um, optimal uh, path plans will be that you're going to send to the robot so that it actually can move the probe accordingly. Uh, to test this, we uh, took this uh, data set, it's called the Pratt's data set. We picked uh, six lesions that were in there, and then we did experiments to identify, can we actually ablate um, these actual real uh, lesion shapes? So this is what one of those looks like, and it takes a little while, so I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit. But what you're seeing at the right is the uh, pressure field coming off of the ablation instrument. And then on the left, what we're seeing is the lesion map. And what you want to see is this dark blue, you want to have it turn uh, completely light blue. And that tells us that we're actually uh, a fully ablated the lesion. And as this moves around, what you're seeing is that it's filling in this arbitrary shape. And again, this arbitrary shape is actually a real shape that was identified from that uh, data set of pre-segmented uh, brain tumors. And as we work our way around, you're seeing that it's filling in. And this is actually turns out to be even more of a challenging problem than you might expect because even after you turn off the ablation probe, it's actually still filling in, right? Because the temperature doesn't go away the moment the probe is turned off, there's still heating in there. So as it was going around, we actually were taking into account what happens to the heating. So after you've passed a, a section of the lesion, it's actually still continuing to heat. And actually, if you look at this as it works out to the end, you realize that we actually had an almost complete ablation. Uh, just about all of the dark blue is gone and the yellow is essentially the margin, which turns out to be about one set of uh, pixels here. So you can get really, really good agreement um, in terms of the ablation to the uh, shapes that you wanted to have. And then here I'm showing this for uh, six different shapes. So those six uh, shapes that we pulled out from that data set. First off, we're showing that we actually have good agreement with what we had in mind. But what's also more important to show is in the brain, um, as you all know, we don't want to do any collateral damage or we need to minimize that collateral damage. So the red is what we actually burned. If you look at this dotted line, that's the shape that you would have got if you just naively used a standard 360 degree um, instrument. So a needle based therapeutic ultrasound probe with no planning, you just picked the 360 um, essentially homogeneous burn that gave the uh, full coverage of the lesion. So by using this approach, not only can we get better control of the shape, we actually can significantly avoid uh, collateral damage to the tissue because we can burn only what we want to burn. So if we take this now, um, the next step is how do we use this closed loop, right? We're putting this in, in the scanner. We have a robot. We have live imaging. Let's get feedback on it. So what I wanted to show now is that not only can we you know, model the probe, determine what the ablation region would look like in simulation, come up with a plan. Now we actually want to take real-time MR-based feedback and use this to do closed-loop control to guarantee you actually burn the lesion you want, even if there are some small modeling errors. So then again, this is a similar type video, but this is actually using live feedback. So on the right, we're getting a MRTI-based uh, thermal feedback map. 
and on the left is the lesion. And again, I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit as it's going along. But what you're going to see is as this probe is rotating around, the uh, temperature map is going to show changing in heating, but it's obviously still some heating even where the probe is not aimed anymore uh, because the uh, temperature doesn't go away instantaneously. And as we're going around, you can see using this closed loop based approach, we can actually get uh, full coverage of the ablation lesion with uh, minimizing the uh, margin required for uh, over ablation. So we were really, really happy to see that we're able to demonstrate that we can actually use live MRTI feedback with the robot with a needle based therapeutic ultrasound to do conformal ablation of a uh, brain, brain tumor. And again, not only have we done this um, in phantoms, but we've actually done this in pigs. So we've had uh, nine porcine trials so far. Most of those were focused on trying to characterize the probe, and we're looking forward to implementing these closed loop ablation trials in pigs very, very soon. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to show where we're doing this work. Uh, I mentioned I was director of Practice Point. This is actually funded by the state of Massachusetts as an incubator for um, medical device companies and work in uh, medical cyber physical systems. And here we actually have a dedicated MR research system. And this is where we're doing all of our work uh, moving forward. And we can be able to essentially test our robot out in the scanner with all the live uh, MR feedback and optimize all these algorithms here. So I want to thank everybody for uh, listening. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, and I encourage you to follow up. My email address is on here as well. And uh, I look forward to uh, speaking with everybody. Thank you very much. Bye.